So in this video, I'm going to be telling you around 10 new tips and tricks for Google's Bard. Now, I understand Bard does lack the capabilities of ChatGPT, but it still can be a very useful tool. Now, you need to understand exactly how to use Bard and how to prompt Bard. And that's what we're going to get into in today's online tutorial. So one of the first things that you need to understand about Bard is that this is probably the only part in where it actually beats GPT. One thing that you have to understand about ChatGPT is that it doesn't have access to real time data, meaning that it lacks the ability to understand what's going on right now. ChatGPT's data goes up until September 2021. Whereas if we're using Bard, which I'm using now, I actually asked Bard what the weather was like today in London. And it said the weather in London today is cloudy and changing to heavy rain by late morning. The temperature is currently nine degrees Celsius. Now this is actually pretty accurate as I did check the data and this actually does work. Now this is what you need to understand about Google's Bard. Google's Bard is essentially a combination. Whereas with ChatGPT, we have ChatGPT and Bing. Essentially, Google's Bard is a combination of GPT and Bing in kind of like a natural conversation model, meaning that you're not going to get links to many different articles, especially the way that you would with Bing sometimes due to the search result. But you do get real time data unlike ChatGPT and you get it in this very conversational form, which if I'm being honest, sometimes is actually going to be pretty useful. Maybe you missed a news article. Maybe you want something that's actually pretty good. And this is where Bard can actually help. So right here, you can see that I'm actually asking Bard if it can verify some very interesting information. So earlier today, some banks were actually raided in France as part of some fraud investigation and actually asked Bard, were banks raided in France today? And it actually gives me the correct data. It says, yes, French banks were raided today as part of an investigation into alleged tax fraud and money laundering. The raids were carried out by the French, French Financial Judicial Investigation Service and it gives the rest of the information. Now, of course, you might be saying, well, I can just simply use Bing for this. But remember, this is simply a conversational thing. If you don't want to click links and if you don't want to engage with other people, maybe you don't want to click any kind of links, you don't want to click any articles. Maybe you just want to stay in the app on your phone as you would with ChatGPT. This is a very actual useful software that can give you real time data. Now, I've got to be honest, this is by far the only point in which Bard actually wins. But it is a noticeable point because everybody seems to say that Bard is completely terrible and I would argue against this. Now, one thing to note about Bard is that it is very dependent on how you prompt. For examples, you can see right here that I actually asked Bard if it can give me some link to some articles. Then it responds, I'm not programmed to assist with that. Now, of course, you might just think, OK, well, I'm going to give up. But I'm going to show you another example of where Bard actually does complete the request. Now, I don't know why this is like that. I think Google's maybe not releasing their full language model just because they're still working on some kind of things. But it's very interesting to see the many differences in responses to the same kinds of questions, even if the wording is maybe one word difference. For example, right here, I asked them about Bitcoin and it actually did manage to give me them some articles that you can see right here as it pinned as sources in the description, which is definitely very, very interesting. So I don't think Bard is programmed to give them articles where it finds them. But sometimes it can do this if you're asking it to write about something. The next thing that Bard can actually do, which is quite similar to ChatGPT, although people were calling Bard completely useless, this is not the case. Bard can actually rewrite paragraphs. So you guys can see right here, I just grabbed a simple paragraph from the internet that is about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin is very similar to gold, because many people do think that Bitcoin is like a digital currency that is like the digital gold. So you can see right here that, of course, Bard actually managed to rewrite this. Now, what was cool about this is that it actually managed to give me some additional information. And you can see right here, it gives me a list of around six or seven bullet points that include some very decent information. You can see it says here are some additional points. It includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bullet points about Bitcoin. And it's really, really cool. And these bullet points are actually related to this paragraph right here. That means that Bard genuinely understands what you're doing and it did rewrite it in a very nice way. Now, what was also cool about this is that when it actually rewrote the article, it actually did give me the links to this. So maybe if you do want to rewrite a blog post or something and you do actually want to cite something, then this is actually going to be really useful for you. Because if you want to rewrite something and you don't want to have a quote, maybe you're writing it for an article for your school, maybe for your university, and maybe you actually need that kind of, I guess you could say, information of where you got it from, 
this is actually going to prove much useful or much more useful than ChatGPT because you can see right here, they actually link to the articles. Now, remember, I do understand that Bing Chat does this in a similar way as well, but this is in terms of actually rewriting something and then citing the article, which is a feature that we don't yet see on ChatGPT. Now, another thing to note about Bard, another tip that you can also do is that Bard actually does use the natural language in terms of prompting. So you don't need to have these insane prompts for Bard, you can actually use the natural language prompting in order to get better responses. So you can see right here, I just asked them to say, can you make it longer? And it actually kind of switched this argument right here to say, here are the, some of the disadvantages of using Bitcoin, which is very interesting because it gives me a different kind of opinion. And this is going to be a lot more interesting for my article readers if I were going to write this. So it's definitely very, very interesting to see how it kind of rewrites content and how it kind of switches those things. Another interesting thing that you can actually do with Bard is when you're assessing real-time data, you can actually click this button right here. On the right hand side, one thing that is really interesting, rather than chat GPT's button right here, where it actually says you need to regenerate a response, one thing that you can actually do with Bard is you can actually view other drafts. This means that if the response generated by Bard is actually something that you don't like, you also have two options. You can only regenerate the response by clicking the regenerate button right there, or you can click this button right here. Now what this does for the user, or maybe you if you're using this, is it actually gives you three different options. You can see right here, there are some simple versions, there is a more detailed one, and there is one that is a different kind of detail. So you can see the first version says, no, it was not raining in London yesterday. According to the Met Office, there was no rain recorded on March the 28th, 2023. The second draft actually includes some more detail. It says the weather actually was mostly cloudy and there was no rain and that includes the degrees and the highs and the lows. Now, what's interesting about this is that this one here and then this one here are the exact same, but there are discrepancies in the temperatures. You can see this one says the high of 12 degrees and this one says there's a high of 10 degrees and this one is a low of 7 degrees and this one is a low of 6 degrees Celsius. So it definitely is a little bit confusing which as to which ones are going to be correct. But nonetheless, having other drafts definitely is quite good because I think what Google wants is it allows it to train the data on what's essentially better for the user. Now, another really cool thing about Bard that many people haven't actually noticed is that Bard can actually make some really cool charts. Now, remember, Bard can access real-time data, which means that it can make some real-time charts that are really, really nice. Now, the reason I actually like this feature is because you can actually use these data points in PowerPoint presentations. Now, of course, there are some AI programs that are going to be coming out soon that completely make this obsolete, but this is really cool. You can see right here, I said, can you make a chart about the weather this week in London? And you can see right here within a moment and literally just a couple of seconds, we then got this complete chart, this complete data, which showed us exactly what was going on. Now, the only problem here is that we don't actually have the dates of this, so I don't know when this actually starts, but I'm guessing this just starts from the Monday to the Sunday, and I'm guessing that since it's a Wednesday now, this is essentially what we are experiencing. So, of course, you can see right here, I could simply screenshot this if I really wanted to, and then I could just simply add this to a PowerPoint presentation. Imagine you're running late for something, if you wanted to use ChatGPT, it wouldn't work. Now, as I was saying, this is definitely really cool because it does give you some charts, but this is not the only way to use this. If you do want also access to real-time data, you can actually do this sometimes with Bing AI. As you can see right here, I actually did ask Bing if you could give me a chart. And to be honest, this one does contain a lot more detail. You can see it actually contains the exact dates with the exact temperatures, the precipitation, and how the weather is going to be affected. Now, this is actually much more effective than Google's Bard, but the only, I guess you could say, kind of point that Bard has is that Bard is actually lightningly quick. So for example, let's say I go ahead and pick another city in the United Kingdom. Let's say I say Manchester. One thing about Bard is that it is very, very quick in submitting this data. So I've submitted it, maybe waiting one, two, three, four, in around four seconds, I've gotten that data. And that was really, really quick, guys. If you know from your past experience about using ChatGPT, maybe use Bing.ai, if you need information in an instant, this definitely gives it to you very, very quickly. Now, some of you might be saying, what's the point of information if it's less detailed? I don't know, guys. Maybe you're in a rush. Maybe you're someone who needs information very, very quickly. That is one feature that Bard actually does have against ChatGPT and against Bing.ai. I'll show you what happens when I ask Bing this question. Now, of course, I wouldn't be asking ChatGPT this question because, of course, ChatGPT is essentially just a large language model 
model that doesn't have access to the real-time data. So when I ask it this data, you can see right here that it does take a couple of seconds to maybe research all the different articles. And of course, it's taking a much longer time because by now, Bard would have submitted that data. So maybe if you're on, maybe say you've got five minutes or something and you really, really need data super, super quickly and you need that data as quickly and efficiently as possible for your presentation, I would say maybe right now Bard is going to be that one. What will be interesting is that as the data does get better, it will be very interesting to see how that data does compare. So if Bard can increase his speed in the future, maybe Bard is going to be better than ChatGPT. I'm not exactly sure how they present the data so quickly, but maybe this might actually be a key part of Google's response in order to beat the other language models. Now, here's another example of Reddit of where Bard actually excels when it comes to making charts. You can see right here that it asks for a specific chart comparing two historical figures. You can see right here that it actually does this very, very effectively, and it does this pretty quickly. You can see here on the vice versa with Bing chat that it actually doesn't do this very effectively. It does this in a very normal paragraph, which isn't exactly what you want. So like I said, Bard actually does win in this category. Now I know that there are tons of other categories in which Bing chat and ChatGPT excel at, but this video is providing you with the tips and tricks for Bard because maybe some people want to use Bard exclusively. And I know that there is a lot of hate online right now about Bard, but there are definitely some points in which Bard can be used. And it just goes to show that certain language models do lack certain things. And there are honestly different strengths about each language model. Another quick tip you need to know about Bard is that you need to reword your questions sometimes. For example, example here, the user actually states, write a random number generator program in Python. Bard then states, I'm not able to help with that as I'm only a large language model. Many users in that position would give up and think, wow, Bard is terrible. Let me go to ChatGPT. But of course, user interface is supposed to be something that is helpful and is very easy to use. So this shouldn't be the case anyways. But someone who persisted, you can see they reworded the question and said, how do I write a random number generator program in Python? So this user didn't say write a random number generator program in Python. They asked it, how do I write a random number generator program in Python? And then Bard actually gives the response, which is definitely very interesting to show that maybe Bard actually does have quite a decent amount of information, but maybe it's just that Google's prompt engineering side of things doesn't work as well as chat GPTs. Maybe it's the natural language processing model. It's just not that effective because maybe we need to format our questions in a better way for this to work. Now, I did see a tweet by I am N-A-F-E-T-S that says some information that is vital to users who need to understand this, okay? Now, in, I think, somewhere on Bard's page, it does say that Bard can't help you with coding just yet, Bard is still learning to code, and responses about code aren't officially supported for now. So, I mean, with Google, there definitely is a little bit of confusion going on because on one side, they do provide code. On another side, on their pages, they're saying that, you know, Bard is still learning to code. Me, personally, I would not use Bard for any coding programs right now because you're likely to find many mistakes and you even do find some mistakes in ChatGPT 3.5. If you do want to code, and as someone who's used GPT-4 to code a couple of days ago, I would recommend you actually use GPT-4 for any of your coding needs just because it's so advanced and the codes never have any mistakes in them. So that is something that is very, very effective for building your apps and building any online application that you need that uses code. Another thing to note about Bard is that many questions will respond in terrible fashion. So look right here. You can see that this user tried Bard and you can see that they didn't get the response that they were working on. I do think that Google is going to be continually updating Bard because of course it does have access to real-time data. But you can see right here that they asked this, this very basic question and it didn't respond with an accurate result. It said the first two months of the year are January and February. What are the other months of the year? January, February, Merary, April, and these are just completely wrong responses. So it's important that when using Bard, you need to fact check every single response you get because sometimes the responses aren't going to be as accurate as you would have hoped. And you can see right here that this is a clear example of that. So remember, Google did say that Bard is going to continue to hallucinate as it is developed because it is still, I'm guessing, in its experimental phase. Another thing that Bard can actually be used for is, as you can see right here, is to write short stories slash blog posts. Now, depending on the accuracy of these, 
that may vary depending on the kind of prompt you put in but you can see that right here i've asked it to write me a short story about how ai destroys civilization and you can see right there it actually writes this story and it does it completely now this is definitely very good because of course you know some people are saying that bard is completely useless but it's going to be interesting because this might be good for idea generation and you can see right here especially with these drafts it's actually very interesting to see the different kind of stories that you get i do think that with these drafts what we essentially we're getting is the shortened version and then the longer version i just don't know why google doesn't say short version medium version or longer version because that would make things a lot more simpler but it just has a draft one draft two draft three which definitely does confuse people quite a bit but yeah you can see that this one is quite short this one is a little bit longer and then this one is the longest version so if you're using this and you want a longer post just simply go over to draft three and that's where you're going to get the longer post in your response so i know that many people are saying that bard is completely useless but right now remember it's not even in the open phase just yet it is in a current waste now i know that many people are saying that bard is absolutely terrible but hopefully these tips did actually help you one thing that i do want to state about google is that google is working on some stuff that is far far advanced than many people understand understand that although open ai is leading the way in large language models there are other ai models that google is simply just far ahead of any other company and i haven't seen any other company come close i will be releasing videos about this but some of them include text to music and text to video which chat gpt doesn't have yet so i wouldn't write google off yet because if it does release a new program i want everyone to understand that google can actually be ahead of the game here and when these other programs do launch don't just think if they launch Bard, which is terrible, I'm not going to try the other product. You definitely want to keep your eyes open because trust me, in the future, it's going to surprise you.